All right, welcome on in, Eagles fans, to episode 25 of the No Huddle Show, our Philadelphia Eagles podcast right here on NJ.com. I'm Joe Gillia. With me, as always, Elliot Stewart Parks and Mark Echo. We have Andrew back, our producer here on the show after being away for a couple weeks. Uh, and now he's back. The whole band is back together, and the Eagles still don't have a football coach. Uh, two weeks, f- full two weeks, as we record this podcast, since Chip Kelly was fired. Uh, supposed to get maybe a head start. Well, that hasn't happened, at least in terms of hiring the next head coach. We'll talk about the candidates we know of, the guys they've interviewed, and where this search is going here on this episode. Or Elliot, we'll start with you. Uh, just get, kind of give me a big picture in your mind of where we're at with this thing. We're doing this podcast on a Tuesday afternoon. The Eagles have interviewed five candidates, and from what we know right now, no other interviews are scheduled at this moment. Yeah, I think the, the biggest surprise to me for the search has just been how basic it's been. I mean, like, they had the... They had the, uh, you know, early interview with Adam Gase, which was a guy everyone expected them to talk to. Um, Peterson's been a bit, I guess, was a bit of a surprise, but even he's not a very exciting candidate. And then Coughlin, that's really the one that, every, you know, has kind of like caused a bit of a stir. But even him, I mean, it just feels like last time around, you know, two years or three years ago, there was Chip involved and Gus Bradley and Bill O'Brien. And they talked to uh, Brian Kelly from Notre Dame. And there was just a lot of like, different candidates and excitement amongst the fan base and things like that. And this time around, it just feels like they're talking to plain, boring candidates who very well could turn out to be head coaches, but there hasn't been much excitement with this search. It's kind of the really like what I, what I think when I think about how these past two weeks have, uh, have played out. It almost feels like really that's it. Even though, yeah, obviously, exactly. even though Tom Coughlin obviously has the resume, we'll get into him and, and his candidacy here, but even with his resume, even that with it, Nothing else excites you here in terms of the names. That doesn't mean these guys are bad candidates, as you're saying, but there's no pizzazz. Mark, what's your feel on this? Five guys have interviewed so far, and I don't think any strikes the fan bases. That's the guy they want. Well, six interviewed, but the one they wanted, and the only one right, with right. any pizzazz, and the only one worth worth interviewing was Adam Gaze, and he got a job in Miami. He told the Eagles, sorry, I'm going to Miami. Um, so, yeah, the other five, they are bad candidates. Don't say they're not bad. They're bad candidates. You got a seventy-year-old who went nineteen and twenty-nine his last three years, one and five against the the Eagles. Um, he's, you know, yeah, I know he won two Super Bowls. Great, yeah. So did Don Don Schull. You you want him? You know, I mean, those two Super Bowls came along. You know, if you if I can get that Tom Coughlin, the one that won two Super Bowls, I'd hire him yesterday. But guess what? The Giants would never let it, let that guy go. The but even that, that even that Tom Coughlin, I mean, unless he's bringing that that version of Eli Manning with him. I mean, like those Super Bowls weren't exactly built. I guess if that makes sense, would you would you agree with that? Like that he, well, he did not. I'm not going to take take away that Tom Coughlin won two Super Bowls. He coached a team at one. He beat Bill Belichick twice in Super Bowl. I'm not taking that away from. Him. No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him all that credit. But he's not that guy anymore. It's been four years. I mean, people get older. They they're they're not what they were. And Tom Coughlin is not what he was. I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm age discriminating here, but there's reasons why some companies have mandatory retirement. So. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm being serious. I mean, am I wrong about that? Don't some companies make you retire at a certain age? There's a reason why you can collect Social Security at 65. I mean, he's 70. So going forward, or, I mean, he's not going to get younger. He's he's not Benjamin Button. I mean, you know, he, he what are you going to give him, a four-year deal? So, so he, when he's 74, he's going to be even better? Come on. Yeah, I mean, that that's my so, biggest thing with Coughlin is like, yeah, no, I just can't no. picture him. And that that's what I was saying. I mean, he did win two Super Bowls. And you're right. You can't take that away from him. And he, clearly, he's a Hall of Famer, maybe. He's, he's borderline, potentially a Hall of Fame coach. But and not, maybe, not. maybe, uh, you, you guys can speak to this more, but I just never got the feeling with the Giants that he, I mean, those Super Bowls, it wasn't like, you know, one year they won seven games, then they won 10, then they won 12, then they went this far in the playoffs, and then they won the Super Bowl. It just kind of felt like, you know, both times they won it. And look, if he if he Coughlin wins Super Bowl with the Eagles, the fans won't care how he does it. But I guess my point is this e- <laughs> he wins Super Bowl with the Eagles. I'll, come on. <laughs> I know, yeah, and Sam Bradford will be MVP. But yeah, exactly. yeah. But I guess my point is this Eagles team isn't they, they don't need this isn't a win now team. They don't need somebody to come in and, and tweak the culture and all of a sudden they're gonna be a thirteen win team. They need somebody to build this thing. They need somebody to yeah, get I mean, a quarterback that's, that's gonna be here for four or five years to teach yeah. him. And that, and that's my thing with Coughlin is even though he only even though he has a two Super Bowl wins, it doesn't feel like he built those teams. And even if he did, I mean, 
like like you're saying, Mark, what are you going to give him a five year deal and then it re- be renegotiating at 75 when when the Eagles are like finally on the precipice of maybe winning something? So that's that's kind of the issue I have. It just feels say, like with if did you watch the Giants play this year? Did you watch them play? Because I had I for some reason I, I did more than I normally I guess the, the Eagles games and Giants games. Whatever. Did you watch? Did you see the opening night against Dallas? Did you see the Jet game? Yeah. Did you see the New England and, game? Did you, I mean, did you see the cat one? And the guy he lost it. He's lost it. He doesn't. He's not good anymore. It's just like players aren't good anymore. Coaches aren't. I mean, it happens to them too. It reminds me of Tom Landry in his last. I'm, I'm old enough that I'm old. I'm. I mean, I'm old, and he's way older than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Even, no, I'll let me. I'll jump in because I disagree. I think Coughlin would make some sense for the. Oh yeah, that's right. You like Coughlin. I do. I, I love yeah. Tom Coughlin. I'll, right. I'll say it for a couple of reasons. One, I, I don't think in twenty nine. You love that, I, huh? I don't think the age, to me, it's not as much of a factor as everyone else because I just don't think he's your typical 69, 7-year-old man. And we're comparing to, I don't think he is. I think he, has, he could do this for a while as long as he keeps, you know, he's he good enough to keep year. winning. He couldn't do it this year. He was, a, he was a bumbling fool on the sideline. He didn't have a good year, but Mark, I mean, they had the worst defense in the league. Forget Let's the not defense. forget the Yeah, defense. the Eagles' defense is so much better. Timeouts left. Well, look, he did not coach well at the end of the games, but you're not going to give him any credit for winning at the end of the game in 10 out of 16 games. They're winning at the end of these games. They, they blow the these games. End. That's his fault. They went 16 Right, but he coached. You are what your them. record says you are. No doubt about it. But the first, he prepared them to get ahead in those games against better teams. Like, that didn't happen by accident. All right, realistically, Joe, if they, hire, if they hire Coughlin, how do you think he coaches Dallas was better than them? I think he Dallas could coach. Four games? I mean, I— I think he'll coach until they drag him out the door. I mean, I think he's going to be that guy, but I don't know, three or four like years. Like the Giants dragged him out the door? Yeah, exactly. Like they did, right. Yeah, yeah, but here's but my other point. I mean, his age is I, – I don't, I don't think that's as big of a deal as everyone else seems to do. But the other point is, who's the better candidate out there? If you're telling my, me Adam – my point – all right, if my, you're my, telling me Adam right. Gase or there was someone out there that everyone loved – like if, if Chip Kelly 2.0 was here – and it was this next great coach everyone thinks it was going to be, then I'm fine with that. But if the candidates here, I mean, I'm talking about Pat Shermer and Deuce Staley, and, and I don't know much about Doug Peterson, so I'm not going to rag on him, but of what we know, I mean, I, I just don't know how those are legitimate other, NFL coaching not, candidates. Just because the Eagles narrowed their search to five not-ready guys or, or past their prime, why, why aren't they talking to Hugh Jackson? Why didn't right, they call right. John Gruden? Why didn't they interview Sean McDermott? Well, that's a fair point. Why didn't they well, anybody on defense? No. But here's, my, here's, here's what I would say to that, Joe. Here's what I would say to that is I agree with you that of those candidates, there's no question Coughlin has the best resume. But my point is with Doug Peterson, all these candidates are a shot in the dark. But with Doug Peterson, at least there's a small chance. Maybe he is a really good coach. Maybe he is here for the next 10 years. Why is, Pat, he, why is Andy Reid so anxious to get rid of him? The, I, I, that's a fair point. I, but I'm saying of the five, look, the reality is we're – Look, I agree with you. They should talk to Hugh Jackson, right? But they're well, not. Wait, so for well, this purposes, we're only well, talking about Sutton. these five guys. What? Well, Kansas City's defensive coach. He's better than Peterson. Right. But I. But my point is we're only talking right now about these five guys. So, like, would I, would I hire Hugh Jackson over these guys? Yes, I would. But at this point, for this podcast on a Tuesday afternoon, it seems like these are the five guys. And my point is, if Peter with Peterson, at least there's a shot in the dark. Maybe he is a really good head coach. I mean, he did learn under some good guys. Andy Reid, whether you love him or hate him, does know how to win in the NFL besides the Super Bowl. I get that. But he does know how to build and be a consistent winner and in the NFL. What Andy's assistant has, has gone on to do well? Ron He's Rivera. He's a guy. He's a Johnson guy. He wasn't Andy. Andy didn't know his name. All right. I'm just saying. All <laughs> Matt, right. But I, I don't disagree with Andy. All right. So, so who would you hire out of these five guys then? McAdoo. You had to hire one. McAdoo. McAdoo? All right. Well, well, what about the idea then of Tom Coughlin with McAdoo as, as offensive coordinator and if you, you groom McAdoo when he's the next coach? Then why just make McAdoo? Grooming just hire McAdoo. Why, why do I got to groom? <laughs> well, or obviously the NFL doesn't his, think he's think ready Coughlin because. Coughlin is a special assistant or something like that. Okay. I don't think the NFL thinks McAdoo is ready because no one seems to want to interview that guy except the Giants who had him on their staff and the Eagles. He's not, I, unless well, I that's the other it. troubling thing. That's the other <laughs> troubling thing. That's the other trouble Wait, thing about, about this search. Person? Anybody besides the Eagles? Well, that, that's what I was about to say. Of the five people they interviewed, of the six people they interviewed, only Adam Gay spoke to somebody that what he wasn't already employed by and not the Eagles. Doug Peterson only talked to the Eagles. Deuce Dale only talked to the Eagles. Pat Sherman only talked to the Eagles. Uh, McAdoo only talked to his team and the and the Eagles. And then who's the fifth guy? 
And now Coughlin's going to talk to the oh, Niners. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's and it. Coughlin will talk to the Niners, right. So the, the guys the Eagles are chasing aren't exactly like – like Gase, they miss out catch. on. The guys you're chasing are easy to catch because nobody, <laughs> nobody else wants them. Yeah, they, yeah. So I'll take – what – tell me – give me one reason Peterson's better than McAdoo. To me? I don't, I don't have any on that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't think – I, I can't give I you a compelling reason. Bay. McAdoo's Green Bay success is better than Peterson's Eagles success as a, as a position coach. Right, Peterson, I guess you, you would know more than me. They were they were terrible under Peterson this year. I, I was a dream team in the four and twelve in the four and twelve team. Green Bay McAdoo wins the Super Bowl. Okay, so better position coach or more success. McAdoo goes to the Giants and Eli Manning raves about him how he helped him and Eli's never been better and blah blah blah. Peterson doesn't even do anything in Kansas City. I mean, he made the Super Bowl. Yeah, know, that's fair. You know, oh, he helped. He helped. Maybe he helped those receivers not catch any touchdowns last year. I don't know. I, I would just like to say I've officially changed my stance, and, and McAdoo is my top guy. Now that was a pretty <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty compelling case. I, I mean, I, McAdoo has a little pedigree to him. If you want to, yeah. if you want to say Doug Peterson, he's also not seventy. How old is McAdoo? McAdoo's probably in his late thirties, would be my guess. So is he is he almost twice as young as Coughlin? No, he's not eighty. Coughlin's not eighty. But... Well, but if McAdoo's in his late like, thirty-five, he's times thirty-eight. 60. So he's a full. He's thirty-one years younger. Okay, so my point is, it's not that far off, though. No, but people want to say uh, Doug Peterson because Andy Reid likes him. Oh, he could be the next Andy Reid. Bob, I mean Ben McAdoo. I'm almost called him Bob McAdoo. Ben McAdoo uh, is much more Andy Reid like than Doug Peterson. Hence, he was green. He was in Green Bay. Where did Where did Andy Reid start? Green Bay. And he was a quarterback coach like Andy in Green Bay. And, then he be, and actually, he's a step ahead of where Andy was when Andy got hired because he was able to be a coordinator. Andy was never even a coordinator before the Eagles hired him. McAdoo has coordinating experience now, plus the Mike McCubbin from Mike McCarthy's you know, lineage or whatever you want to call it in Green Bay. I, I don't think, I'll, I'll say this. I, don't think Mac, I think McAdoo's fourth on the list right now. But I, but I, if on the asking, Eagles list, yes. Okay. But I mean, if you're asking me of that group, that wouldn't even be my group. I would have interviewed none of those guys. <laughs> to be honest, I would have. I wouldn't have fired. Jay, Jay, so. the, oh yeah, me either. But I would have interviewed McDermott. I would have interviewed uh, Hugh Jackson. I would have maybe maybe put a call into John Gruden just to see, just to see. I'm, I don't know if I want just to see. Um, I would interview Bob Sutton, Kansas City's defensive coordinator. It's obvious Eagles want no part of a defensive coordinator. Maybe they're keeping Billy Davis. I don't know. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, Tom um, Coughlin, right, Billy Davis, and Tom Donahue are going to turn this team around. What a group that would be. Let me ask you guys this, because to me, as we go back and forth with these coaches and their resumes, and uh, obviously Tom's got a full one. Everyone else is trying to figure out. I would what hope so. He's been well, coaching yeah, for <laughs> He's been a coach at some level. I think, I think he started in the late 60s at Syracuse. I mean, the guy's been coaching <laughs> yeah. forever here. Um, of the candidates, he started. Here's the question to me. It doesn't it really can't come down to which one do you like best because outside of Tom, we're just kind of grasping at straws on what they are, what they could be. It's well, what do the e- it's what do the Eagles want? To me, is the question. If they want someone that's going to come in and, and put a stamp on everything, clearly, you know, we know what Tom would do in that role. If you want someone that could be the next Andy Reid, maybe that is McAdoo, maybe that's Doug Peterson because he has the connection there. If you want to keep continuity with Sam Bradford, I guess. That's Pat Schumer. So what do we think the Eagles want? Because that probably leads us to who they're going to hire. Elliot? Well, and that's the thing that concerns me. If I was an Eagles fan, that, that would be the thing that would concern, yeah. would, would concern me the most about what this search seems to be indicating to me. And to me, it indicates, one, they want an offensive guy, which I think is a good thing. But, I mean, when you listen to Jeffrey Laurie talk, talk when he fired Chip, he talked a lot about being a collaborative guy and, you know, having an open heart with his players and, you know, talk, he talked a lot about culture, which is ironic that that's ended up waking chip fired. But the point is it just doesn't feel to me like the guy that they're going to pick is going to be the strongest football coach. And maybe that's not, you know, what you need as your top skill set as a head coach. And, you know, that, if that's not the case, then that's fair. But it just seems to me like they're going to pick somebody who one will get along really well with Howie Roseman and Tom Donahue and two will, will be, I don't want to say baby as players, but we'll put the players first as opposed to building a program at with chip. It was all about him, but to be fair, this Eagles team has been not good for a long time and has never won a Super Bowl. So to, to cater to this group of players, I don't think was the right way to do it. But I do think, you know, Joe, you said, what are they looking for? I think 
it just doesn't feel like they're going to end up picking the best football coach. To, to me, that shouldn't be really how you go about the search for a head football coach. Mark, how about you? When you look at what the Eagles are doing here, what do you think they want more than who do you think they want? I don't think I, – I, I know I'm going to get killed for this, but I don't think they know what they're doing. I really don't. <laughs> I think they're just walking around aimlessly. You know, Andy Reid calls them and says, hey, Doug Peterson's ready. He's like, oh, okay, well, let's talk to Peterson. Okay, good. Hey, Tom Coughlin got fired. You guys want to – oh, okay. Let's, like, what if Coughlin didn't get fired? Or, oh, I'm sorry, resigned. What if Coughlin didn't – like, did they have a plan – like, well, let they, me ask you this. They, they supposedly had a plan. Well, Tom Coughlin couldn't have been part of the plan then because he wasn't, he wasn't even available. Right, and they fired Chip five days or six they days before Tom start. stepped down. Right. That head start, with the head start line, I think they thought they were, they were going to get out of it. I think well, that's I, what I was going to say. Do you think the plan was, all right, we'll fire Chip, we'll set up early with Gase, and we'll get him. And, and then when that didn't happen, now they they're like. Out of the building. They should have never let him go to Miami. But if he doesn't want to stay here, I mean, we don't, right. you know, okay. I haven't talked to anyone who was in the meeting, so I don't know how it went. But, I mean, if he doesn't want to stay here, maybe that's where they misjudged. Maybe that's where the, you know, they, they thought, all right, well, we'll bring Gase in here and he'll he'll just sign up because we're the Eagles. And, you know, we had Andy Reid for a long time and we landed Chip, who was the best coaching candidate last time around. Maybe that's where they misjudged. But you're right. To this point, it doesn't feel like there's there's a direction to this. It just feels like they're just feeling out a bunch of different people and seeing it. But it doesn't, it doesn't, I guess, seem like it, there's a lot of, I, I wouldn't have a lot of confidence in how this no, thing is going. How can you? you can. I don't know. It's kind of sad. What I mean, I don't know. I, it, like you said, I mean, none of the, it's, it, there's something to be said for the fact that none of the guys you're talking to, anyone else is talking to. Well, it just doesn't feel like any of the guys that they could hire. Well, on Derek Carter. I mean, he, or Cutter, well, he's probably going to take Tampa Bay, but don't you at least have to want to talk to him? Well, then that's I, the issue, and this is I'd, what we talked I'd, about. I'd be what we, well, I was going to say, this is what we talked about in the last podcast, is how attractive is this Eagles job? Like, if you're Dirk Cutter, I mean, why are you leaving Tampa Bay to come here? There's no, no. quarterback. I mean, <laughs> first of all, it's Tampa Bay. Like, well, well, maybe I would at least – I'd talk to the Eagles just to get Tampa Bay – I mean, why hasn't Tampa Bay hired him yet? Have they complied with the Rooney rule? I don't. I don't know what they really have. I don't know, but my point is, this Eagles yeah, job is not well, very attractive. I think they interviewed Lovey Smith. <laughs> yeah. Why not Lovey Smith? Why not? Why aren't Eagles talking to him? And they talked to him in 2013 before they hired Chip. So I don't. I don't know. I mean, the big question is why not at least talk to Hugh Jackson? Like, I'm not saying hire him, but when a guy is pretty much universally looked at as one of the top two or three candidates out there, you're just not interested at all. Like you're not even going to, that's like, that's like in the draft, like you might as well work out all the quarterbacks because you know, like why not? Like it's, 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 and, and even with the draft, there's restrictions on how many people you can talk to, but with the coaching, there, there's no restrictions on how many people they can talk to that. You're telling me Hugh Jackson would say no to spending four hours with you just to do it and see. I mean, you never know. And that's the, the weird part. Is like they're not talking to Hugh, da- Hugh Jackson. They're not talking to Sean McDermott. The John Gruden thing, I agree with you. But they're, they're, it doesn't feel like – it feels you. like they have a very small set of guys, but the, no, the, 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 that's like all C-level candidates. You could they're not casting a wide net. I mean, think about the five that we're talking about. Gates is obviously gone. He was near the top of everyone's list. But of the five that we're bantering about – Two of them are from their own staff right. from last year on a team that wasn't well coached and had a whole bunch of mess, a whole bunch of issues. Two of them are from the seven and nine Giants that haven't had a winning year in Six four years, even though I like Tom. And the fifth one is Doug Peterson, who, you know, we don't know much about other than he was here and now he's been under Andy Reid. And the hope is he's maybe Andy Reid 2.0, but that's not a very wide net of the guy. And, and the crazy part is we heard on Monday night that this might be it for a while in terms of scheduling interviews. Well, do you think maybe. I know Lori, when Lori fired Chip, he said, because Chip was such a bold decision in their eyes, right? Like they changed a lot about how they did things and they gave him full control and that was a bold decision. And then Lori said, he's not afraid of making another big risky move based off of Chip. But, you know, just the way you described that, Joe, and I think it was a fair way to describe it. It certainly seems like, you know, they're afraid of going in another extreme direction. It feels like they're, they're like very much in their comfort zone right now. And that when, for a team that hasn't, won a playoff game since 2008, I think. I mean, that's not a great place to be. I think that team needs radical changes. Well, why do you think they're, I mean, they're, they're comfortable with these guys? 
Yeah, it doesn't mean it's the right decision, but I mean, why wouldn't they be comfortable with him? I mean, Pat Shermer's in the building. Deuce is in the building. They know Doug Peterson. I mean, I guess Coughlin's the one outlier. But, but I mean, but he's the one with a resume. I mean, what? Ex, explain to me why Lovey. If they if they if we get a call tomorrow that they're interviewing Lovey Smith, I would be sold on that. I mean, I, he has his he has his flaws, but he's not old. He's 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 been successful. He you know he's he would fix their defense. He'd put him in a four three Tampa two which they, they kind of fit a little bit. You would hope he hire a good offensive coordinator, maybe even keep Shermer as offense coordinator. Who knows? I, I would I – would, Lovey Smith, better, is, to me, is a better candidate than any, any of the five that, they're, that we're talking about. I, I agree with you that he is. I, I agree. But it's just – there doesn't seem like he's on their radar. And to me, it wouldn't – and I, this isn't any type of inside information or anything like that. It just still wouldn't surprise me. If like we get a you know an email from the Eagles like in four days and they said they've hired somebody and it was just it was like whoa like out of nowhere like I, it's, you know what, it wouldn't, I'm, I was going to say that there there could be somebody that, that we, we don't, don't know about exactly somebody that they know they haven't announced they haven't even they've interviewed them somewhere else maybe they didn't announce the interview they did it like they went they went out to UCLA and interviewed Jim March I'm just throwing yeah or, or, right something before. like that like it just feels like this just. Again, it, and it just feels like this is it. Like this is this is why you fired Chip. I'm not saying, and you know, I've been clear that I think Chip should have been fired. But the, even the people that thought Chip should be fired have to be thinking like, like for I mean, this. I mean, for Pat Shermer, like he's already on the staff. <laughs> I like Pat Shermer personally, but if they, I mean, how do they spin? How do they sell Pat Shermer to the to their fans? You can't. You just, there's there's no sell. Bradford, fifty million guaranteed. <laughs> And then your your duo going forward is Shermer and Brad. And the funny thing is, I think Shermer and Bradford will probably win like seven games next year. I don't know about that. I mean, but they're not going to win a playoff game, and they're not going to. Well, seven's not going to get you in the playoffs, so that, that's that, what I'm saying, right? But I mean, I don't think the Eagles will bottom out under Pat Shermer. I don't know why I feel that way, but I mean, I think he's familiar with the personnel. I think he wouldn't. Maybe he keeps some of the things Chip had in place, I, but. In we'll terms of ranking the, the we'll keep the cafeteria though. open for us, so that'll be good. Well, yeah, that's all that really matters to me. <laughs> so, but I, I mean, it, just to throw it out there and be clear, because it's it, it hit me when you guys said that maybe in four days there'd be that email, like you know, you know, someone we're not even talking about I, from both of you. There's a zero point zero percent chance that Lurie, Lurie crawls back to Chip, right? Like that. There's no oh way God, we go yeah. wrestling storyline <laughs> here. <laughs> oh my God, that would be great. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I. Nah. I wouldn't say zero just because you never know, but I would say it's about less than one percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, less than one percent, and even less than that, the chip comes back. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Chip doesn't have any job out from He's what we know. A million though. You don't have why. You know that he doesn't have to work for. <laughs> why would he for you know? Yeah, there's no way that would yeah. be insane though. Yeah, I'm you kind know, of rooting I, for the chaos of that whole thing. Oh, that I would. Be, I would like oh, that. God, that would. I mean, hey, they would land. It would mean they got the best candidate. So for <laughs> you're an Eagles fan, I mean. Oh, that would be that would be. Uh, All right, how about this? Better chance of Eagles re- rehiring we, Chip Kelly, well. <laughs> re- rehiring Chip Kelly, or Tom Coughlin winning a Super Bowl as Eagles head coach. <laughs> Tom Coughlin winning a Super Bowl as Eagles. Yeah, head. I, it's got to be Tom, just because I can't see them crawling back to Chip. Oh wait, Chip Kelly. There's no way it would ever happen on either end. I don't think that didn't end real. I mean, Laurie was very critical. I mean, yeah. Laurie fired Andy Reid and said, "I can't wait to honor him and, and put him in our Ring of Honor." <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. even when he fired Ray Rhodes. He said nice things about him. He, he 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 did not say anything nice about Chip Kelly. That being said, Tom Coughlin's not gonna. I mean, if if he does, and in two years we're recording this no huddle podcast, you can play this back. But like, Tom Coughlin's not gonna win a Super Bowl. No, with the Eagles. No, like, I mean, fans of Chip Kelly coming back here, right? But that's this, never happened ever in the history of football at any sport where a guy was fired and got his own job back. That's never happened. Ever. Neither has the Eagles winning a Super Bowl. No, well, that's true. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's time to change, I guess, the the history here. All right, before we we wrap this one and, and kind of you know put a bow on where we're at with this Eagles coaching search, let's let's each go around and give, uh, and especially from you two, following it you know every single minute here, Elliot, you're camped out outside the Novacare. It seems like every time uh, I talk <laughs> yeah, to you, me here, give it. me what you think they should do, just based on what we know right now. And look, if Jim Moore or you know someone we don't know, Lovey Smith, pops up in the next couple of days, that's what happens. But based on the five names that they have interviewed and, and not in a job right now, so Adam Gase obviously not a part of it, the five left, what they 
you know, will do your prediction, I guess, and then what you think they should do among the candidates we know about. So when you say among the candidates we know about, can I include Hugh Jackson in that? Or you mean of we're only going of the five guys? Hugh's not a candidate. Well, that's right, what go, I'm well but that's so what I'm what, saying. You could say what they should do based on anything and then what they will do based okay. on the candidates we well, know. What they should do, in my opinion, is hire Hugh Jackson. I think he, he, he checks off a lot of the boxes. He, from everyone... From the people I talk to that have interacted with him in some capacity, he like is a great players coach. I mean, you know, I've obviously I never played Hugh Jackson, so I can't go off too much. But you watch like YouTube clips of him, and I mean, he just seems like he's he he checks off their open their open heart box. He he seems to check that box. But then from a football standpoint, I mean, he went I think he went eight and eight with the Raiders that one year, which is for Oakland is pretty impressive. Considering, that's like eleven and five. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And <laughs> yeah, right. And he, he did it with the one the for Carson Palmer's first year back off the couch. So I mean, I, that's a good job. I mean, hey, he won more games and chipped it this year. But I mean, also I think you know he he got good play out of Andy Dalton. He's coming from a winning organization. So I that would be the guy I I would hire. Um, now who do I think? <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea who I think they're gonna hire. I mean. Maybe Doug Peterson, but then, you know, Echo, you, you said you spoke to someone who But I, kinda... I, I, I could have been somebody telling me what I wanted to hear. No, I know, but I'm just saying, I mean, like, I, it, I honestly don't think there's a clear favorite. I mean, I may, I, I, at this point, I would say I, my, I would put my money, if I had to put it on somebody, for some reason I'm saying Pat Shermer. But I think it's be Shermer or Peterson, I guess, would be my, my two guesses there. I think they're kind of the same guy. But I think Shermer, I would say this, I think there's a very good chance Shermer's in the organization in some capacity next year, whether that's his offensive coordinator or head coach. I, I think Shermer's going to be back. Mark, how about you? What you think they will do and what they really should do here? What they will do, I'm, I'm going to go with Elliot. I, I think when it all comes, when it all washes out, Pat Shermer could be your your head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, and <laughs> um, I, I, that's and, I, and the day Chip got fired, if you would have said to me, "What are what what percent would you put Pat Shermer as being the next head coach?" I would have said one, one percent, two percent, less than five. I thought there's no way. I mean, but the way things have played out, the way you know who they've interviewed, if if, if you're holding me to one of the five. I think they're going to go to safe route. They're going to, like you said, f- familiarity, good guy, open heart, all that kind of stuff. I, I think that's unless another unless another name pops in over the next week or so that we, like you said, that we don't know about. I think they're going to hire. I think they're going to hire Pat Shermer. What would I do? I I would go out. I I, I would I wouldn't even have talked to some of the guys they, that they did. And I would have. I don't think Hugh Jackson Elliott is, is a great choice, but I think he's going to be the coach of the Giants or the 49ers. I don't even think he uh, – I think he's going to take, take one of those, those two jobs, maybe the Giants. Um, okay. I would go after – I would go after Love – I would talk – I would certainly talk to Lovey Smith, um, and I would talk to some other defense. I would talk to a bunch of other guys. I, of the people available right now, I mean, I'd probably hire Lovey. Lovey. <laughs> and ask him – just so I could ask him, what's it like being called Lovey in your own life? <laughs> <laughs> Go from Chip to Lovey. Chip to Lovey, and uh, and I not interviewing. I believe Hugh Jackson's name is Huey, so you're not going to you interview a Huey there, but you're going to have a, a Lovey. A no also, listen chip. to how basic the names are when they're interviewing, right? Pat, Tom, like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're all it's a, just it's so a basic. basic search. It's a basic. I it's would. A very uh, basic I, I think it's going to be Peterson. Oh, Deuce is up. Deuce. Deuce is yeah, different. I, my guess is going to be Peterson because I just think back to Lurie sitting up there at the podium a couple weeks ago talking about the Andy Reid era and the family atmosphere. And I feel like they just going to try to bring that back in a younger guy. Uh, but I, like I said earlier, I, to me, if I was Lurie and I could think outside the box here, I'd call Chip Kelly back and try to cry my way back into the guy they should have never fired in the first place. I agree. That would be, oh, but that, that would be the story of all time. Of all time. Yeah, that would be the ultimate Jeffrey Lurie moment if he had to go up there and introduce Chip Kelly as the next head coach of the Eagles. Yeah, that's the next head coach. Would they even hold a pre- – I guess they'd have to hold have a Have to. Yeah. <laughs> what if they just said, ah, we were just kidding. Yeah, Chip's still release. Coach. Come on, you guys. You guys bought that stuff that we got. Come on. We, didn't- yeah. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for playing along, Pat and Deuce and everybody. That was great. Thank Tom. Thanks. Yeah, I guess that Deuce <laughs> interview really was a fake. <laughs> So last time when we wrapped, we, we joked about when we would talk next, and, and we said, we'll probably have one more of these, but then, you know, who knows? Any day it could be a coach. Do you, 
I guess we'll, we'll throw our guesses out. Do you think we'll have one of these again next week before a head coach is, is hired? I mean, it doesn't feel like they're going to make a decision you know, tomorrow or the next day. I mean, it could be wrong, but it doesn't feel that way. Well, yeah, I think they'll have a coach by this time next week. Well, does okay. City lose? Well, if, Joe, if you think it's Doug Peterson, Kansas City has to lose. Well, that's true. Yeah. But, well, but, but everyone can know that's their coach. Well, they can't announce it, though. Right, but I guess at this time next week, are we going to be talking as if we don't know who the coach is? I, yeah, I think we might not. I think we might. We still might not know. So what's today? Today's the twelfth of January, right? Is that right? So we do this on the nineteenth. That they hired Chip on the sixteenth, I believe. So we're gonna, yeah, that would be something if we go into the third, fourth week of January without an Eagles head coach. But uh, oh, no. it is possible. How come? Play is this. Not just the Eagles. How come McDaniel's and Patricia from New England aren't, aren't getting more play? I don't. Especially I don't really, I wouldn't like been a head coach. So, have people been scared off the Belichick tree? Because none of them have done well. I mean, they haven't even gotten sniffs. They haven't. Even, I mean, I, I know you can't because they're playing, but I haven't even heard like people asking about them. That's Maybe just, that'll end up being the little surprise candidate. Right, yeah. McDaniel's or Patricia? No, he's defense. They don't. They ain't going to. Defense, they don't want any of that. Now, McDaniels, and he has the head coaching experience. It didn't work out well, but everyone, I think everyone thought he'd get another job at some point. Worked out just as well as Pat Shermer. <laughs> right. Was, was, right. Daniels, McDaniels wasn't any, wasn't any worse in Denver than Shermer was in Cleveland. I'm just, yeah, that could be, that could be your surprise. Guy. Maybe they, they're going to wait for New England to lose, which could be a while. Unless Doug Peterson's game plan works on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doug Peterson's going to knock him out. They're going to take the loser. They'll hire the, the, the loser of, the, of that game. <laughs> Get excited, Eagles fans. The loser of Saturday's game is coming to you. It's going to be the next head coach. All right, guys, this has been a fun one. Obviously, we're trying to pick up the pieces here and figure out where the Eagles are going to go. And uh, maybe by the next time we talk to you, they'll have a coach. If not, uh, we'll keep bantering about wherever they're going, and, and maybe another name will be added to this mix. Elliot, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, no problem. Don't resign Sam Bradford. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Well, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all of you for listening here to episode 25 of the No Huddle Show, our Philadelphia Eagles podcast on NJ.com. Make sure to follow the show at the No Huddle Show on Twitter. We'll be back with you next week. Talk about wherever the Eagles are and what they're doing uh, with this head coaching search right here on NJ.com. <laughs> 